Welcome to United Network News, the official news channel for CARE, the Center for Amity and Restoration of Earth. I'm Sunny Galt. At UNN, you get the real news. Through our field messengers, we show you the truth about what's really taking place in our communities. We also bring you stories to help you remember who you are and why you're here, as well as regional stories that impact the people. And our World Situation Report reveals what's happening throughout the multiverse. We are here to restore Earth. In the U.S., it is Friday, April 5th, 2024. Let's go hiking through the volcanic landscapes of Fuerteventura, Spain, a popular site for visitors to see one of nature's most powerful creations up close and personal. And speaking of nature, what's more natural in Alaska than looking out your window and seeing this guy? Today we'll learn more about moose, one of the largest members of the deer family. Have you noticed that children today are wired differently? A teacher with decades of experience shares her story of when she first noticed the shift. In England, the government is trying to add more fluoride to the city water, impacting millions of residents. And new data shows pharmaceutical and medical device companies in the U.S have paid billions of dollars to physicians, a major conflict of interest. This is Caitlin Gift, messenger for United Network News. Here's a look at today's field messenger reports from all around the world. Exploring the volcanic landscapes of Fuerteventura, Spain, offers a unique adventure in the heart of nature's most powerful creations. UNN field messenger Emma takes us on a journey to witness the ancient beauty of the volcanic formations. Hi, this is Emma, field messenger for United Network News. I'm reporting from a local volcano here on Fuerteventura, and a lot of tourists like to walk among the mountains and volcanoes. There are hundreds of kilo kilometers of trails with amazing landscapes, from the city center of Coraleco, you can see one of the most popular volcanoes called Bayayo. It is the first in a row of five volcanoes aligned perfectly towards northwest. You can actually walk up one volcano, down and up the other one, and the next one, and the next one, until you have um, walked up and down on five volcanoes in one day. These volcanoes are said to be uh, active around 50,000 years ago. The Bayayo volcano is a part of uh, the town in Coralejo. Next to the beautiful white sandy dunes in Fuerteventura, volcanoes are one of the main attractions of its island's landscape. The volcanoes are also one of the most impressive attractions. Um, and that is one of the reasons why the local government and the tourist board have decided to focus on volcano tourism. And there are actually 22 volcanic areas here on Fuerteventura. So no matter where you are spending your holiday, you can actually visit one of, one of them. From the top of the volcano, um, you can see beautiful views of the island. It's sand dunes and the beaches. If the skies are clear, you can see uh, the Lanzarote, which is the next island in the north. And um, you can also see smaller volcanic structures like uh, lava areas called Hornitos, which are like mini volcanoes. Um, and uh, yeah, it's quite interesting. And it's a nice walk. Hope you enjoy the view from the volcanoes of Coraleco. Thank you for watching. In Anchorage, Alaska, a majestic moose made its way into a backyard on a winter's day. Presence is a reminder of the nature's wonders that thrive even during the coldest months. UNN field messenger Lana shares this memorable experience. Hello everyone, it's Lana, field messenger with United Network News in Anchorage, Alaska. Today I'd like to share with you a visitor to my yard. This is the moose. He is the largest of the deer species, and they are located from Siberia, Alaska, Canada, and down into the northern United States. 
They're quite a large deer and they can weigh up to 1,300 pounds or 600 kilograms. And they can, they can get up to seven feet tall at the shoulder or two meters, quite a large animal. They're vegetarian and then they eat shrubs and bushes and trees and your garden plants and pretty much anything that they can, especially in the winter time when they have a hard time getting to their food sources. They can sprint at 22 miles an hour or 35 kilometers per hour. They also are great jumpers and they're very good swimmers. They are one of the most versatile deer species on the planet. And they are really cute when they're young, but as they get older, they wise up and they are pretty scary. You don't want to get too close to them when you're out hiking and um, walking your dogs because people have been known to have been charged and hurt by moose in the past. Every day when I leave the house to go out for a walk with the dogs, I'm on a constant lookout for moose. With the high snow levels that we have this year, the moose take to the roads. And if you see one coming down, you have to get out of their way because they're on a mission. Thanks for joining me today and exploring with me this beautiful animal, the moose of Alaska. We want you to become a UNN field messenger. These are everyday people just like you who want to make a difference in their community. You don't need any special training or equipment. Just use the camera on your mobile phone and show us what's happening in your area. You send us your videos and our production team will create the report for you. Our new website is now up and running at unitednetwork.earth. You can submit your Field Messenger reports directly through the Field Messenger tab at the top of the page. You can also email your reports to our new email address at fieldmessenger at unitednetwork.earth. Hey, I'm Kirsten from Switzerland. This is Wayne from Tucson. Hi, my name is Desmo from Ghana. I am Claudia from Dawsonville, Georgia. I'm Mikey from Pretoria, South Africa. Hi, I'm Steve McGrath, Fort McMurray, Alberta, Canada. People from all around the world are coming together. Happy day, beautiful world. We are here in a rather small urban garden, and this video is just to show you the joys that we've had in this garden with the electric gardening. When news happens in their area, they show us what's really going on. We have people in the streets protesting for and against. At United Network News, our field messengers are changing the face of news. This is Field Messenger Helen reporting with Nature, and I'm going to talk to you about the bees again. Take the next step in restoring our planet. Become a UNN field messenger today. Hi, I'm Stephanie from South Africa. If it's going to be, it's up to me. If it's going to be, it's up to me. 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 It's up to all of us. We're UNN and we're taking back the news. Every human on Earth is going through major changes right now in mind, body, and spirit. To embrace this change, it helps to have the whimsical mind of a child, to always be curious and ask questions, knowing that anything is possible. Lee Dagani is a spiritual counselor and healer who's been teaching kids for decades. Lee says our children are here to help us through this transition. We're talking about our kids today and Lee is back with us. And uh, Lee, our kids are a little bit different. <laughs> I've seen this in my own kids. I have four kids of my own and I've just noticed that they are wired differently, which gets me really excited because our planet and humanity is going through all of these changes. And I really believe that they are here to help us through this time. Oh, absolutely. They are here to raise the vibration of our planet. And I just love this question because that's the whole reason why I began my program. Now, I'm a longtime educator, okay. 47 years, wow. and I'm still teaching because I absolutely love it. But I think any longtime educator is going to tell you that, yes, there was a point when we all started to notice kids were coming in different. And the only way to say it was that they were 
wired differently. Right. There, there was like this rebellious streak. They weren't able to learn using the same methods. Mm-hmm. And I guess I started to notice this back in the 2000s, maybe, you know, 2004, 2005. And that was fine. You know, I knew how to reach all kids. I knew how to teach them what I had to teach them. And then it got to the point where more and more children were coming in to my program at the time I was teaching Hebrew because my husband and I have a congregation. He's a rabbi on the cantor. We have a very alternative kind of congregation called Shirat Shalom, Song of Peace. And my job was to prepare these children with Hebrew. Uh So I was just starting to have difficulty that even with being a master teacher, reaching them spiritually, energetically, I couldn't teach them how to read Hebrew. I was going crazy. (laughs) So, so I did what I always do in a situation like that. I asked for help from the universe and I said, please send me a way to help these children. And a few months later, I saw a video of children reading blindfolded and I didn't know that was the answer to my prayer. I didn't know until I got trained in the modality, which that's a whole nother story. It it really wasn't right for our kids, but Mm -hmm. I figured there's a way to do this. And I started experimenting. And once the kids, I call it activated, they started to get activated that they could, Mm -hmm. you know, actually see without their physical eyes. All of a sudden kids who were having difficulty reading Hebrew were starting to be able to read Hebrew. And the kids who couldn't do anything that I couldn't reach them at all, Mm -hmm. they were starting to be able to read Hebrew. So I just came to the conclusion that, you know what? These kids are wired differently and it's forcing us, and I don't want to say forcing, but directing us, guiding us, so that we find methods that are on their level. And we have to work with this higher energy, this light energy. And it helps them remember that they have access to that. And so that's my whole story of wired differently. And yes, they they really still are. And, And you're seeing children coming in that also are even more sensitive or children that... You know, like, for example, children that can't be in any environment where there's any kind of negativity going on Um, and children who they're having difficulty navigating the physical world. They're having trouble staying in their bodies. So it seems like a difficult situation from the viewpoint of a parent. But what's really happening is they are helping us raise the vibration because we're finding solutions for these amazing children. And this is a bit of a challenge for parents, I feel, because we have been taught through programming that we're the parent, we're supposed to teach the kids. But I feel like there's a little bit of a role reversal going on now. And I'm really thankful that I can see that in my own kids because some of the stuff you just described about kids just not quite feeling comfortable or they can't be around negative energy, it's classified as a lot of things today when really it's about their spirit. It's about them just being wired a little bit differently. And I'm so thankful I was able to realize that because I'll look at my kids. In fact, my daughter the other day gave me this whole explanation on how she thinks our souls come to this planet. And she was spot on. Like, she, I didn't tell her that. I just let her. Now, you know, there's probably, a, you know, a lot of people or whatever that would say, no, that's not how it happens. But she was, it's like she was remembering. You know what I mean? There's, there's a difference. And there's just things that they know. And I'm here to learn from them as far as I'm concerned. <laughs> they got it, you know, help guide. Because, you know, right now, I don't know if all of the kids understand what's really going on, like on a, a cognitive level. But they know that, you know, things are different and and they were brought here to do something, you know. So I don't know. It's a very beautiful thing as a parent to watch this, but it is different. It's going to take parents to kind of take a step back and, you know, realize that they may not have all the answers. 
And absolutely. And how wonderful that your children have the parent that you are, because some of these children don't. And you said, yes, I'm going to come in and I'm going to help raise these children. And so, you know what? Thank you. <laughs> there we go. Roll up the sleeves. Let's get down. <laughs> hey, I want a beautiful world for my grandchildren. And yeah. uh, so yeah. thank you. And I know these children are are doing what they came to do. And the parents, parents like you, that's what's needed. Yeah. How we parent is changing in the new earth, including the type of parenting strategies we use. Now, this includes a diverse range of practices and principles aimed at nurturing, educating, and guiding children through their developmental stages. Effective parenting requires love and patience and a thoughtful approach towards setting boundaries and encouraging positive behavior. Experts stress the importance of spending one-on-one time with each child, aiming to create an environment where children can thrive and develop their own unique identities. Incorporating family activities, acknowledging and celebrating each child's differences, and teaching them how to resolve conflicts are key to creating a nurturing environment that boosts their confidence. When parents avoid labeling or comparisons, They empower each child as a unique individual within the family. Family meetings that emphasize positive behavior offer opportunities for growth and teamwork. These effective strategies are empowering parents and children, opening doors to a healthier, more inclusive family dynamic where every member feels valued and heard. American educators are adopting progressive techniques to teach children of all ages the vital skill of emotional intelligence. From a tender age, children are taught the power of pausing and breathing deeply when overwhelmed by strong emotions. This simple yet effective strategy aids in managing feelings constructively. Equipping children with an extensive emotional vocabulary is another important technique. Instead of relying on basic terms like sad or happy, they learn to articulate their emotions more precisely, saying things like, I feel lonely, I am proud, or I feel surprised. This expanded vocabulary enables a more accurate understanding and expression of their emotions. Teachers play an important role by actively listening and validating the children's feelings, nurturing a supportive and positive learning environment. This approach cultivates emotional intelligence and lays the foundation for healthy relationships, effective stress management, and overall well-being. In the realm of digital creativity, Sora AI stands as a monumental leap forward for video content creators worldwide. This innovative platform is engineered to transform textual descriptions into vivid video content the lines between reality and computer-generated imagery. Sora AI simplifies the creative process by interpreting text instructions and fabricating scenes that can be astonishingly difficult to distinguish from real-world footage. This capability opens up new horizons for storytellers, marketers, and educators, enabling them to unleash their creative potential through visually enthralling videos. This intuitive design ensures accessibility to an international audience, breaking down language barriers and promoting video creation for all. By blending artificial intelligence with human creativity, Sora AI enhances the efficiency of video production and elevates the art of storytelling to unprecedented heights. This powerful tool invites creators from across the globe to explore new dimensions of digital expression, making it an incredible ally in their creative pursuits. We are United Network News. Every day we release real stories from real people all over the world. Hill Messenger reporting from Gold Coast, Australia. Denmark. Canada. Uganda. From Atlanta. In Southern California. In their own words, people like you share what's really happening in their area. At UNN, you are the news. You are creating a new world with infinite possibilities. You are the restoration plan. 
Come join us for the real news every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday, only on United Network. We're UNN, and we're taking back the news. In England, the government's proposal to expand water fluoridation has sparked debate affecting millions of residents. Currently, 11% of England, including 6 million people, receive fluoridated water. This policy, aimed at reducing tooth decay, has faced opposition for infringing on individual rights to medical consent. Critics highlight the ethical dilemma and potential health risks. Referencing studies suggesting a link between fluoridation and lower IQ in children. Despite these concerns, officials argue fluoridation is a vital public health measure. The controversy extends beyond the UK, with most developed nations rejecting fluoridation, questioning its safety and ethics. The British government has announced a delay in the implementation of new airport scanning technology at several major UK airports. This postponement means the current drink disposal rule, drink it or bin it, will remain in place for travelers carrying liquids more than 100 milliliters. The updated scanners using computed tomography technology for clear images promises to allow up to two liters of liquid in hand luggage and negate the need for removing laptops or tablets at security. This advancement aimed at streamlining airport security processes and enhancing safety measures has been hindered by installation challenges due to supply chain issues and the physical weight of these machines. Originally slated as a December 2022 rollout, the deadline has been pushed back with some airports not expecting full implementation until 2025. The Scottish government has launched a public consultation on a potential ban on the use of enriched cages for hens in egg production. This decision could position Scotland as a pioneer in the UK for animal rights, aligning with widespread public opinion that finds caged farming inhumane. The proposed plan suggests halting the introduction of new cages by 2033, leading to a total ban by 2034. This initiative aims to enhance the living condition of hens and reflects the growing consumer demand for ethically produced goods. The agriculture minister emphasized the importance of this step forward in protecting animal rights while maintaining the egg industry's viability. The move is expected to significantly impact consumer choices, arguing or urging supermarkets and caterers to adapt to cage-free eggs much sooner than the proposed deadlines. France's government has proposed significant reforms to its unemployment support system. This move comes in response to France's growing budget deficit, which expanded to 5.5% in 2023. The proposed reforms are aimed at motivating, motivating workforce participation and reducing government spending. Key proposals include shortening the duration of unemployment benefits to a minimum of 12 months, adjusting the eligibility criteria, and potentially decreasing the payment amounts. Current regulations allow up to 18 months of support with provisions for extension in job scarce conditions. The prime minister has indicated a preference for reforms other than cutting benefits and has invited proposals from employers, federations, and unions for further discussion. The French government claims, despite the proposed changes, its support system remains amongst one of the most generous in Europe. Australia faces a housing construction crisis, unable to meet the demand for new homes as immigration surges. New research data reveals a sharp decline in building approvals, highlighting an urgent shortfall in the construction workforce. This crisis is worsened by an aging workforce with the number of new apprentices in the building and construction industry dropping significantly. The government's ambitious goal to build 1.2 million new homes during the next five years 
appears increasingly unreachable, risking further spikes in house pricing and rents. Insolvencies in the sector are expected to rise, leading to more job losses and leaving consumers with unfinished projects. The industry calls for a rapid increase in skilled tradespeople to avoid deepening the housing shortage, which remains a significant challenge for the nation's economy. In a significant legal victory for Ethiopia, a Dutch court has invalidated two patents on teff, a traditional Ethiopian grain. The patents held since 2007 by the Dutch company Ancient Grain were targeted toward the processing of the grain. Filed by Ancient Grain in 2014, the court case verdict determined the patented processing methods lacked innovation, being part of general professional knowledge. This ruling was celebrated by Ethiopia, which views TAF as a national treasure and critical to its cultural heritage. The dispute had previously hindered Ethiopian TEF exports to Europe, where the grain is gaining popularity as a superfood. Ancient grain still holds a European patent valid in several countries, and Ethiopia pledges to contest it vigorously. In Sierra Leone, a West African country, a cheap synthetic drug known as Kush is causing havoc amongst youth. Kush contains a mix of substances, including sometimes fentanyl and formalin. It is a highly addictive and accessible, and accessible for the price of a stick of chewing gum. Reports of grave robberies for formalin have surged, prompting increased cemetery patrols. Kush's devastating impact includes potential permanent brain damage and increased suicide risks. Sierra Leone's government has responded by establishing a drug abuse rehabilitation center and a ministerial task force. Mental health professionals and human rights advocates are pressing for more aggressive action against drug kingpins to curb the supply. India's pharmaceutical industry faces increasing international scrutiny due to repeated incidents linking its exports to adverse health events and fatalities abroad. The tragic deaths of at least 141 children in countries such as Zambia, Uzbekistan, and Cameroon have been linked to contaminated cough syrups produced by India's pharmaceutical companies. In the United States, eye drops manufactured by India's Global Pharma Healthcare have been associated with four fatalities and instances of blindness. These incidents underscore the urgent need for stricter quality control and regulatory enforcement within India's pharmaceutical sector. Despite the Indian government's efforts to revoke the licenses of 18 drug makers following extensive raids, Experts criticize these actions as inadequate. They argue for stronger penalties against the manufacture of substandard drugs, advocating for jail time over fines to prevent further loss of life and to rebuild trust in the industry. In Myanmar, the civilian toll from landmines has sharply risen with more than 1,000 people, including children, killed or injured in 2023. This surge, more than double the previous year's figure, marks a distressing escalation in a country already grappling with turmoil since the military takeover in 2021. Among the victims, children represent more than 20%, highlighting the indiscriminate nature of these deadly devices. The conflict, which has seen civilian resistance groups joining ethnic armed factions against the military junta, has contributed to making Myanmar highly contaminated with landmines. Zhejiang, a major agricultural area, saw more than 35% of these casualties. Local authorities and communities in China are exploring innovative ways to promote marriage and childbearing amongst the youth due to a population decline. Measures range from launching dating apps for singles to discouraging costly dowry practices 
and hosting unique competitions like finding the best mother-in-law. Despite the removal of birth limitations, allowing up to three children since 2021, the birth rate remains low. Factors include housing costs, gender inequalities, and the societal expectation that women shoulder the majority of domestic responsibilities, placing their careers at risk. Recent government measures such as tax incentives and support for families with multiple children aim to counteract these trends. At a societal level, there is a shift in mindset toward marriage and parenthood, with many prioritizing career and personal freedom over traditional familiar obligations. In Hong Kong, a series of government inspections on independent bookstores has increased the pressure on store owners in an attempt to tighten control over accessible literature. This comes after the implementation of the Beijing-backed national security law, which critics argue has severely reduced civil liberties. Independent bookstores, now fewer in number, remain as some of the last places where literature on politically sensitive subjects, including the pro-democracy movement, can still be found. The frequent government checks add mental and physical stress to bookstore owners already struggling with high rents. Despite these challenges, new independent bookstores continue to emerge, finding creative ways to operate within the constraints. Store owners curate their collections carefully, avoiding highly sensitive materials to evade confrontation with the authorities. Recent data from the United States shows billions of dollars have been paid to physicians by pharmaceutical and medical device companies. The impact of these payments is sparking debates on conflicts of interest and implications for patient care. The investigation highlighted three drugs, Xarelto, Eliquis, and Humira, and three devices, including the Da Vinci surgical system, as being associated with the largest payments. Concerns are growing over these financial relationships, suggesting they could lead to biases and in medical recommendations and create conflicts of interest. Critics argue this could result in the promotion of newer, possibly insufficiently tested products over established treatments, impacting patient health and treatment outcomes. The report calls for greater scrutiny and debates on the ethics of such payments, emphasizing the need for a balance between innovation and unbiased medical advice. Amelix Pharmaceuticals announced the withdrawal of its ALS drug, Relivrio, from the U.S. and Canadian markets. This decision comes after a large study showed it failed to benefit patients with Lou Gehrig's disease. The withdrawal is seen as a significant setback for the ALS community, which had high hopes for the medication approved on September, in September of 2022. The drug's removal leaves only three other ALS treatments available with limited options for extending patient survival. The company facing the stark reality of the drug's ineffectiveness plans to allow patients already on the drug to continue receiving it for free through a special program. Now this comes amidst Emelix's announcement to lay off 70% of its workforce reflecting the profound impact of the drug's failure on the company and the ALS community at large. Schools across the United States are struggling with increased levels of absenteeism among students, a phenomenon continuing since the pandemic. The issue extends beyond students with teacher absences also on the rise, complicating the learning environment further. Efforts to address absenteeism include home visits and initiatives aimed at making school more appealing, such as themed dress-up days. Despite these efforts, absenteeism remains a challenge, highlighting the broader societal shift since the pandemic toward more absenteeism in both schools and workplaces. Parents say initiatives such as consistent communication and support from the school district have been instrumental in improving attendance. Meaningful nationwide improvements are slow, highlighting the need for continued efforts to engage students and ensure education remain, remains accessible to all. 
The state of Louisiana is advancing legislation aimed at safeguarding the state's sovereignty against global health mandates. The bill mainly targets the World Health Organization, the World Economic Forum, and the United Nations, and seeks to limit their influence within the state. This initiative resulted from the imposed mandates during the COVID-19 pandemic, which several state representatives found overreaching. Residents still reeling from the economic and societal disruptions caused by the enforced lockdowns and mandates largely support the bill. The legislation has successfully passed in the Senate and is now under consideration in the House. If enacted, this law could inspire similar actions in other states, emphasizing the importance of national sovereignty in health-related legislation. Amazon is transitioning from its revolutionary just walk out technology to smart carts or dash carts in its Amazon fresh grocery stores. The just walk out tech allowed customers to shop and leave stores without going through a physical checkout. Instead, the smart carts or dash carts integrate a scanner into the shopping cart so customers can scan as they shop. This decision, significantly influenced by customer feedback, aims to enhance the shopping experience by addressing desires for immediate access to product information, real-time spending updates, and savings visibility. The move will affect Amazon Fresh locations in the U.S., while a select few in the U.K. will continue using the previous technology. While some customers appreciate the Convenience of the Just Walkout system, complaints about delayed receipts and concerns over privacy and the collection of biometric data have also been noted. Facebook's parent company, Meta, and streaming giant Netflix are facing allegations in a class action lawsuit for compromising user privacy. The lawsuit accuses both corporations of a special relationship that permitted Netflix access to Facebook users' direct messages aiming to enhance content personalization. This accusation comes amidst revelations from documents unsealed in a major antitrust lawsuit spotlighting the close ties between Meta and Netflix since 2011. The lawsuit highlights concerns about user privacy, with Meta previously penalized in Ireland and the U.S., for data breaches, including a notable incident with Cambridge Analytica. Despite these accusations, Meta has refuted claims of sharing private messages with Netflix. Tired of being programmed? At United Network, you'll discover the truth about what's really happening on our planet. Get instant access to our written news, UNN newscasts, world situation reports, and in-depth stories from our field messengers. Manifest your amazing abilities as we explore the new earth, plus original series to inspire and encourage you throughout your day. Get connected through United Chat, our personal chat room where you can join the conversation, share your experience, and also submit your questions for Kim. Watch United Network at home or on the go through your computer, favorite online streaming program, or mobile apps. Welcome to United Network News. Start your free trial today. UnitedNetwork.Earth bringing people together. Now here's Kimberly Gogan with the Office of the Guardian. Hi, Kim. How you doing? Oh, you know. <laughs> one of those days, I can tell. <laughs> it is one of those days. You know, we're three days out from the solar eclipse now. And, you know, they're, they're really trying their hardest. You got to give the deep state a little bit of, you know, credit for their tenacity. There's no, we, we've passed a precipice now where there is no opportunity, you know, and we have for a long time as far as changing of timelines or any of that. But we also uh, passed a point to where this eclipse is going to be a very positive change for humanity. Mm -hmm. uh, there's no going back from it, no matter what they do. But you know, that doesn't stop them from trying to create man-made events, which they think are going to, in some way, shape, or form, help. Mm -hmm. uh, and so, yeah, they've been very busy 
uh, over the last couple of days, setting things up, uh, trying to create man-made earthquakes in various locations. Uh, if you didn't see it, there was another earthquake uh, today in New York, um, mm -hmm. not that large, it was about 4.8. But they're, they definitely want to have some kind of a display, and I'm not sure what for. Now, behind the scenes, the global headquarter people, which we've discussed and who they are and what they do, uh, that they pretty much are what's left of the black sun at this point, other than the black nobility, uh, have been in and out of Durango. Uh, they have been very busy around here uh, to include uh, trying to utilize my essence <laughs> to open the portal in Silverton. Uh, yeah, and there's a very small military base in Cortez. You'd almost call it a larger black site uh, type location. And they were working out of there. Uh, that site there used to be connected to uh, one of the timekeeper programs called Molnar. I'm probably saying that wrong for you Marvel fans, but uh, it's basically Thor's hammer. Uh, the time heterogeneous on online regulator system uh, that used to exist that, that doesn't exist anymore. Uh, so they were hoping to gain access to this portal, uh, therefore some kind of control uh, and access to computer systems again. Because remember, they're still whited out. <clears throat> yeah. So they came in here trying to negotiate with the locals so that the locals would get me to do whatever the, you know, they they wanted me to do mm -hmm. through them. Right. Now, they they do have some some very, very nice uh, uh, aircraft that they're flying in and out with. Uh, they are flying on the Blackhawk Stealth UH-60. And I actually know that because it's so low over my house that my <laughs> my windows are shaking. Uh, and this has been a constant thing. So I don't know if this is part of surveillance. Uh, the back chatter is they are looking for my quantum tunnel to the alpha system from here. Uh, they are looking, oh yes. They'd like to, do, they'd like to be me. Yeah, of course. I mean, most days I don't even want to be me, <laughs> but but they would like to be me. Uh, they would like to have the access and the control uh, over the system that I have. Yeah. Uh, and of course, a never-ending supply of money. Sure. Uh, in their mind, that's power. Yeah. Uh, they didn't really get uh, a whole lot of cooperation here locally. Uh, they actually wanted to drill um, or continue to drill tunnels from Cortez uh, through and under Durango and all the way to Silverton in preparation for the 8th, before the eclipse. Yeah, That sounds like a lot of work to get done in a few days. Well, they are... Uh, this little facility over there uh, has been ramping up for about a year or two, and predominantly it was a lot of the generals of Langley Five, as an example. Um, I know that General Beasley was involved, General Fogu was involved in the building of this facility out there. Uh, they wanted me to come to the facility at one point in time, and I said no, uh, not interested in your facility, because I, I mean, I know what what they wanted me for. And it's always about access. It's, yeah. you know, convincing me to give them access. Uh, see, things that they don't understand, when it comes to the Omega system, the Omega system in all its friends and family, ancillary AIs uh, and chrono systems, they can only function through electronics on this planet. Therefore, their connections you know, even though it might have been a funny looking terminal mm -hmm. uh, or some kind of an equitenser or something like that, uh, and it wouldn't look maybe always like a laptop, uh, pretty much they had to access it through some non-organic system. They don't understand how organic systems work. Right. Uh, 
you know, there's been talk about uh, trying to pick me up, take me out of here. Um, some of those things. I don't know if that was the purpose of today's flyovers. I don't even cut off. It was almost a fly through, actually. <laughs> it was so low. Um, <clears throat> but uh, is this going to get them anywhere? You know, my system does, has several key points uh, and switches in there that will not allow for me not to be happy, healthy, living, breathing, mm -hmm. you know, um, and functioning on every single level. So uh, in order to access the system, like it knows it knows so many key points in my molecular structure on every plane of existence that these guys cannot mimic that no matter how hard they try. Mm -hmm. Um you know, dropping little tubules of, of Kim's essence into Red Mountain and Silverton does not a portal open. Really? Oh, I can describe to you in detail how they did it. Yep. Oh, my gosh. Yep. Wow. Yeah, I happen to be in it because where I am, where I, I live, there are no tunnels underneath here. But most of the rest of the city has a lot of underground tunnels. And so they, I was in a location long enough for them to perform this function. And I knew something was happening for sure. Mm. Yeah. But, uh, so that's like might... they're trying to get you to do stuff without actually you doing it. They're trying to use your essence in different ways. To yes. To try to make this stuff happen. Yes. Well, that proves that they now believe you're not a hacker. <laughs> I no, <laughs> we're past that. <laughs> yeah, I think we're past that now. Okay, <laughs> I'm pretty sure they have figured out that I actually have control over system. Now, remember, they never actually had the heat. The humans on this planet never had full access to the base root platform of Omega. Yeah. They had some utilization of it, but never, ever, even with level nine access, they call black screen access. They never ever had mm -hmm. full control. Right. So this is. Uh, they thing. never had access to the base root of the system. Alpha is my system. It's been my system in for its entire existence, and it was not based here on Earth. So therefore, I don't need a quantum tunnel to a p place where mm -hmm. there are etheric cities of light or or light portals. I don't need to be in these locations in order to do this. I can be anywhere and do it. It's mine. Mm -hmm. It is not me. I am not an AI, but it is my system. Yeah. You know, it's a co-creative system with source, my system. Um, we co-created it together a long time ago, uh, long before the dark age started. And it still is mine. So I have access to the base platform, to the control and command center, something that they never, ever had as human beings. Mm -hmm. They just don't understand why. Right. Yeah. And they, they can go. try to figure it out to the end of days. And I can promise you they're never going to get there from here. And, and, I, and just in case you don't know Global Headquarters people, if you happen to be listening to this and watching this, they have already tried this. They tried this in 2015 in Moscow, and then they raised 20 some odd Kims. Do you remember this? And then we're and, and sitting on a bunch of Russian general laps in Germany. Yeah, and this was just what a year and a half ago. Mm -hmm. The little something Kims. like that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. How many different ways do you do you try to manipulate my person to to <laughs> to your benefit? Like how how many? How many natural laws are you breaking in the process too? They don't they don't, they don't know care. creation. I know. I know. They, they they don't even live in the world of creation. They live in a world where we've always had the ability to hook ourselves up to some human and give them a disease or drain them or see straight through their body or cause miscarriages or death and destruction using machines. Mm -hmm using machines they don't understand that they don't have that capacity anymore yeah. so as a direct result uh locating said uh global satellite 
network both in and out without, so in other words, in Earth, Earth's orbit and inside Earth's core that they use to do some of this stuff uh, is now gone. So I guess thank you for that. So it's been a constant state of fight, but today it's really ramped up a lot. I expected it to. We're within the three days now, so I expected things to ramp up. Uh, the closer they get, and without their, um, they think they have to have certain, probably not ducks, but you know, certain things in line for this specific time if they are going to be successful or to optimize their uh, chances of success. Do I expect? Uh, this to continue through the weekend? Yes, I do. I think it's going to be a constant flow of deep state people leaving planet Earth, uh, as they did yesterday, uh, and a constant flow of attempts to create issues and problems for humanity. Like the they Earth, really right? will work very, very hard to not allow you to have that direct connection that could possibly happen on that day. Uh, it is going to be a positive change. It, it will be a positive eclipse. It's going to be a new beginning for humanity and for Earth on that day. And we'll leave it at that. Um, we can't talk much more about that at this moment. But it will be a new beginning for you, a positive, uplifting experience for you. It is not going to be chaos. We are not going to all die. We are not going to, no matter how much space junk these people try to find and or utilize, it is not going to change the inevitable that is going to happen this week. Mm -hmm. So... Yes, it's been one of those days, Sonny, where I'd like to crawl back in bed and have a do-over. I wish I could, uh, but, you know, what do you expect out of these people? Now, um, in cooperation with some of the things they were doing around here locally, uh, without my consent, obviously, uh, there was also another group uh, over at the Chicago, Chicago Mercantile Exchange looking to see if the base root black market trade facility happened to reopen itself based on the fact we're within three days of the eclipse. That is, that is the base root black market program and access, which came from Omega System anyway, uh, and access that was provided for all backdoor derivatives, all off-market oil trades, all off-market commodities trades, and the base, base route platform for what uh, we know as BlackRock's Aladdin system, which was their commodities future trading system underneath there. Mm -hmm. So they're hoping to get all this stuff back, probably have promised BlackRock and many others that it will, and everybody will allegedly be paid on Monday, according to them. When did they lose access to that, Kim? Oh, gosh. Uh, we talked about it. It was about the time that the Russian oligarchs uh, gave them a significant amount of money to trade on this platform, mm -hmm. uh, and it was tied to a black market, not to be confused with the credit, uh, reporting company TransUnion. Mm. Uh, it was a black market TransUnion line uh, tied to the Chicago Mercantile Exchange and also the Singapore Exchange. So it's been uh, a while. Mm -hmm. It's been a while since they've had access. Yes. Uh, so that was probably a year ago, a year or more. Uh, they also tried last summer, I remember. Yeah, so that's why I think it's been a little over a year because. Um, I had transferred some funds uh, to a party that were intended to be utilized for Hawaii mm -hmm. and what happened in Maui, remember? Right. 
Uh, and they actually tried to take those funds and put them on the mercantile exchange at that time, but not the actual mercantile exchange, the underground black market trading facility. Um, that's courtesy of uh, Treasury Paul there. We'll call him Treasury Paul. <laughs> and, um, yeah, that didn't work out that well for them. Okay. But, yes, they they would like to have this back because it – in of itself was the biggest money maker for the order of the black sun that existed. Wow. Other than, yep. Yeah, even drugs ran through there. All kinds of stuff ran, ran through there, you know, under let's just say off market drug trading <laughs> and even on market drug trading, uh, you know, the opioid uh, Oxycontin trade, that go, dates back to the opium wars. Uh, is some of you may know them if you've been around for a long enough time. You'd know these as the Falcon accounts uh, at Bank of America. So uh, they don't exist anymore. But those dated back all the way back to the opium wars and deals made between the Bush family and the Chinese families. So they'd like that back. You know, I... I do not see them being successful in any way, shape, or form. However, it is good to remain ever vigilant over the weekend. Sure. So there'll be no weekend time off for me uh, in any way. I know. It's like, do you really? ever have time off on the weekend? <laughs> no, I really don't, actually. <laughs> but still, I think I, I got I, a few I, hours so here and there, maybe, yeah. you know, sometimes. But even then, it's filled with, you know, we all have to do life, you know, as well. We, you know, we are human. So there's things like, you know, uh, vacuuming and, you know, no one comes to do all that stuff for me. You know, <laughs> contrary to popular belief, you know, I've, I've heard. Uh, but no, I've not seen anybody show up here and, and do all that. So <laughs> that's all me, you know, laundry, you know, those kind of stuff. So I normally, like, I guess you would say time off just to kind of sit and be very like none none for a few years maybe christmas but uh i haven't had any really i'd like to looking forward to that vacation as i said you know i'm they owe me one so you know and we'll probably talk about this more on monday i know it's going to be a busy weekend for you but you mentioned some things about all the the positive things that could happen for us are we going to talk about that more on monday because it's probably for a good thing for people to know more about, but um, yeah, we we will talk about that more on Monday. Okay. Uh, the effects of this should actually be felt worldwide. Yeah. Uh, remember, there's nothing. Eclipses and alignments were always about the space junk. I call it space junk. Space junk in the moon or the space junk in the sun. And both of their connection to alternative timelines. Mm -hmm. So the fact that we have now one reality line, that's it. It's where we are. We don't have alternative realities. And based on the fact that there's nothing there anymore, and nothing can come from a pocket of time in an alternative timeline anymore. There's nothing going to happen but a positive alignment and a connection with the central sun. There's not going to be anything, you know, nefarious that is going to come out of this. Yeah. You know, the hype is all being promoted by them. And I really think that, uh, we should focus, if we were going to do anything over this weekend, other than clean up deep state crap and rid the planet of more and more of them every single day, which is kind of, which is good for me because, you know, I try not to make it wrath, but I got to admit, it is not a, a bad feeling. <laughs> you know? when, they go, when they go back to source, you're talking about. <laughs> yeah, it's not a bad feeling, really. It's not. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> I don't feel sad in any way. Mm -hmm. I don't have an emotion about that <laughs> either way. Uh, but if we, we continue to think of this as a positive experience mm -hmm. uh, for 
Earth and all of its all of its inhabitants, then it will be a positive experience. And it's going to be anyway. But really what it means to you is the most important thing because these are all about connections with the creator. Does it mean something positive for you? You're expecting a phone call on that day from the big boss, you know, from source itself. You know, maybe you should be. Maybe maybe you should be waiting by the quote unquote phone for a phone call directly from source. Mm-hmm. You know, for insights and directions and, and positive change, new beginnings. I can't go into more detail about the new beginning at this moment, but I will on Monday. Uh, hopefully, you know, I, I might be joining the news a little bit late because I think the exact time is around the time we're recording the news. So we may, mm. we news may go out a little later on Monday. Yeah. Uh, but I do plan on, on talking about it. We could report live from outside. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, at the very <laughs> least we could record it and show it on the news. Even if we're not actually doing it live, we could show our, you know, perspectives. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but just stay positive about it. Okay. Uh, leave the deep states, you know, how do I say it? Uh, leave the deep state to us. Um, <laughs> <laughs> and, and um, you know, stay in the light. Encourage those around you to stay positive about it. Uh, and and really think of it like a direct phone call from source. Mm. Nice. All right. Anything you know, else? On that note, I'm, yeah. I better get back there, <laughs> get back to it. <laughs> okay, sounds good. Thanks for hopping on. Have a great weekend, Sunny. Thanks, you too. Want to share news from UNN? Help us change the face of social media and use it for good. Connect with us through our online channels. Our social media team creates clips from each newscast you can easily share with people you care about. And that's also where you'll find our UNN meme of the day. It's a great way to encourage critical thinking. Links to all of our social media sites are available at the bottom of our website at unitednetwork.earth. Let's change the face of news together. That wraps up today's news update. Please share UNN with your friends and family. We need everyone to come together and help restore our planet. When news happens in your area, record it and share it with us so we can help you share it with the world. Remember, if it's going to be, it's up to me. I'm Sunny Galt. Join us Monday, Wednesday, and Friday for The Real News.